Hello, I'm Dr. David Richardson. I'm a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Southern California. I've been discussing a holistic approach to glaucoma treatment. In other words, a treatment that takes into account things other than intraocular pressure. In one of my earlier videos, I mentioned that what's good for cardiovascular health should be good for glaucoma. And exercise is one of the things that uh, we all know is good for cardiovascular health. As far as whether it's good for glaucoma, that's not as clear. So today, I'd like to discuss some of the nuances of exercise and glaucoma. So let's get going. So there are some things that we know increase intraocular pressure. Uh, any kind of valsalva maneuver, which is uh, what's associated with straining, uh, straining uh, with constipation, straining with holding one's breath, straining with exercise. Uh, that maneuver uh, results in an increase in pressure. And depending on uh, how hard one holds the breath and strains, the pressure can go up from four millimeters of mercury above baseline, um, all the way up to uh, oh, even 20 millimeters of mercury above baseline. Uh, in one study that looked at weightlifters, uh, one of the weightlifters in the study uh, had an intraocular pressure above 40 during weightlifting. So we know that exercises such as weightlifting can result in an incredible <laughs> increase in intraocular pressure. Uh, not, not everybody has pressures go up as high as 40 during weightlifting, but it is possible. And for most people, uh, they just won't know how high their pressures are. So transient fluctuations in pressure, such as with weightlifting, uh, could be damaging to the optic nerve. Now, what, uh, what we don't know is whether or not these brief fluctuations, uh, when repeated multiple times in you know short periods during, say, a weightlifting uh, training session, uh, cause any kind of permanent damage. Uh, one of the things that happens immediately after exercise is that the intraocular pressure actually goes down for a period of time, which ranges anywhere from five minutes to an hour after after exercises. Um, now. One of the things that uh, is worth noting also is that it's not just how high one's intraocular pressure is that results in glaucomatous damage. Um, a number of recent studies, the uh, Collaborative Initial Glaucoma Treatment Study, or CIGTS, and um, the Advanced Glaucoma Intervention Study, uh, AGIS, both showed uh, pretty conclusively that fluctuation in pressure as well as elevation of pressure can result in glaucomatous damage. Uh, so it stands to reason that if during exercise one is having pretty severe fluctuations in pressure, uh, during exercise the pressure is going up in the eye, after exercise the pressure goes down, that exercise itself could be detrimental to the optic nerve. So what do I recommend to my patients who have glaucoma and are interested in exercise? Well, again, taking a holistic approach and realizing that there's a person attached to that eye and that person has a heart, a brain, kidneys, and other things that uh, would benefit from cardiovascular fitness. Uh, I still recommend to the vast majority of my patients that they exercise on a regular basis. Uh, I do, however, encourage uh, aerobic exercises. Um, and in terms of weightlifting, I generally recommend multiple repetitions of smaller weights rather than uh, fewer repetitions of much heavier weights. And again, that's because of the, the known increase in intraocular pressure with the Valsalva maneuver. 
uh, some other things that uh, I tend to discuss with my patients with glaucoma. Uh, I have a number who um, enjoy yoga, and I think yoga is a particularly great form of exercise, uh, which seems to have benefits not only for one's physical health, but one's mental and emotional health as well. Um, there are, however, some caveats there. It is known that any type of inverted position, uh, such as can occur with downward dog and some of the other uh, yoga positions, results in a transient increase in intraocular pressure, which can be quite uh, severe. So I do recommend for my patients who uh, prefer yoga that they avoid the inverted positions. Um, I also recommend that uh, my patients in avoid inversion tables uh, and extended headstands. Uh, so basically, <laughs> try to keep your head above your heart. Um, it is known, uh, you don't have to be upside down, uh, just lying down in a supine position, which is lying on your back, increases pressure in the eye. And lying in a prone position, which is face down, increases your pressure even more. So, um, as much as possible, again, you want to perform your exercises upright. So, uh, bench pressing is actually not great for the intraocular pressure uh, because you get both an elevation from lying supine on your back as well as from the straining of the bench press itself. So, those are some of my thoughts about uh, uh, exercise and glaucoma, as well as a review of some of the literature that's available. Uh, there's, there's a lot of literature available. Unfortunately, it's, uh, it's not uh, conclusive in the sense that there is a definite recommendation that is right. And uh, as we go through these videos together, uh, you're going to find out that a lot of glaucoma treatment uh, is fits that, that, that we don't have a bright line or a black and white answer. So um, again, apropos today, uh, it's a gray day and uh, I've got a bit of a, of a gray uh, answer or description about exercise and glaucoma, but hopefully you found it uh, somewhat informative, if not uh, all that great of a guide as to what to do. All right, take care.